Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. Android apps and games are meant to be used on mobile devices. There is no doubt about that. But sometimes it's just not practical to sideload an app to your device time and time again whenever you want to test some new feature or bug fix in the game that you are creating, if you are a Unity developer, for example or you just want to gain a competitive edge when you're gaming with a mouse and keyboard while other players are trying to fit their fat, nasty fingers on that miniature screen. Oh, sorry, back to the topic. So, if you want to do any of these things, then an Android emulator is much needed. When you're an app developer, you've got free emulators which are built by Google. They are awesome for their purpose, but try to do anything more demanding on them and you will scream in pain. There's gotta be something more powerful. Well, yes, there is. Behold Nox Emulator. You can get it completely for free from BigNox.com, link is in the description, and the installation is totally straightforward. But why is this emulator so awesome? Well, it's got everything what you need. You can use your keyboard to control touch, swipe, tilt and even simulate that you are physically walking with your phone. Which brings me to another point. You can set up a virtual location. This means that playing games like Pokemon Go will be a breeze. And you don't even need to move and accidentally burn some calories. Oh no, what a time to be alive. But all of this would mean nothing if the performance was so bad that even an old Nokia would outperform this thing. Thankfully, that's not the case. And it performs. It performs like you would expect from a flagship smartphone, snappy as hell. But don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at this emulator in action. First up, let's show the performance on Subway Surfers. And well, you know how it's played. You swipe on the screen left and right and you just click and swipe and you jump up and left, all right, and right. But who wants to play like this on an emulator? That's why you can map swipes and taps to the keys on your keyboard by going over here to keyboard control and we just select a key. And you just click and drag in the direction that you want the swipe to happen and this is going to be the right arrow. Then just click and drag the mouse again, left arrow, up arrow and down arrow. Now we just want to press on save and we don't want this to have any opacity. And we can play by just pressing the keys, which is totally awesome. And well, you can also set taps instead of swipes. So let's set this up. We want the gas to be up arrow and the brake to be down arrow. And now we can test if it works. We will save and the opacity can be as it is now and just press up and it works. It completely works, so this is totally awesome and cool. You can also change the resolution, DPI and even the amount of memory from the easily accessible and simple to use system settings. A nice feature is that when you take a screenshot, you can access it from outside of your emulator as well. This is completely awesome in that if you ever need to do some editing magic on your screenshots, you don't need to go through the hassle of somehow sending them to your PC because they are already there. If you like this video, hit the like button and share it with someone who's also searching for the best of the best in the Android emulator space. Subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button to get notified about my new tutorials and videos. Leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.